Hey guys, it's Frederick. I just wanted to do a um, quick video on ND filters. I've received a few comments or uh, personal messages asking uh, about ND filters and uh, if they're necessary or just a preference or, or what have you. And uh, the answer to that, as far as aerial shooting goes, an ND filter is an absolute necessary. It isn't kind of a personal preference of mine. Uh, and so I thought I'd do a video and explain why it's, it's a necessity because um, my Phantom 3 at $1,300 plus dollars, uh, with extra batteries and whatnot uh, is pretty much useless, uh, the footage that it shoots um, without a good $35 to $50 ND filter. Um, an ND filter is um, it, it's kind of like sunglasses for your camera. It's literally like that. It blocks the light coming in so you can reduce your shutter speed. Without an ND filter, you know, on auto mode, uh, that shutter speed could be anywhere from 500 to 1,000, uh, which is just way, way, way too fast. So um, the ND filter, uh, what it does is slows your shutter speed, and it does two primary things. It, it removes jello effect. That's what people uh, commonly know the term, but uh, it's actually called rolling shutter. Um, and if you've seen it in your footage, you can't miss it. It, it, it literally, your, your footage looks like jello, like it's wavy and, and, and uh, has these motion waves through it. Um, and then the second thing is it helps create a natural cinematic motion blur. And the way that you do that is by setting your shutter speed uh, double your frame rate. That's, this is, uh, it's highly debated actually, and some people think that it's nonsense, but regardless of what you think, you can look it up, Google it, don't trust me. Uh, but this is the rule of thumb for any kind of uh, videography. I don't care if it's, a, if it's a Phantom 3 or a Red Epic that you're shooting on. Um, if you're shooting 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 50. 30 frames per second, shutter speed should be 60. And on the Phantom 3, if you're shooting in the 1080 mode at 60 frames per second, uh, your shutter speed should be a 125. And when I say it should be these numbers, 50, 60, 125, it should be in that range, uh, not lower. That's important to note. But uh, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second and you're at the 50 to 100, that's, uh, that's pretty safe. Closer to 50 is better, but, but 100 is fine. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I'm going to show you a video. And uh, keep in mind as I show you guys this, uh, I learned that QuickTime's uh, screen capture does not play back smoothly. It only records at 20 frames per second. So when I did this, this is the third time I've tried to do this, um, this little video. Um, it, it doesn't play back smoothly, which is the whole purpose of the video to show. So what I'm going to do is do this little um, a test here, these comparisons, and show you on screen and point some things out. And then right after that, I'm going to run this segment that I rendered out in high definition. And I'll place in my timeline and render it with this video. Uh, so you can watch it and, and watch where I pause it, and you'll know the areas to look for. So anyway, here's, here's a shot without an ND filter. We're flying up. And then I'm going to pause it. Notice up here the leaves on, these, on this tree. I mean, this is almost like a photograph. They are crisp and clean. And for video, that is not a good thing. A lot of folks, I think, are coming from a photography uh, background, and they, and they think frame by frame having a good, clean, crisp image is, uh, is what you're trying to achieve. But that's not the case for, uh, for good uh uh, uh, cinematic video, you know, stuff that has natural organic motion to it. Um, so you'll notice that as I step through these frames, and we're moving by this at a pretty good pace, these leaves are pretty crisp and clean all the way through. And that's because that's on the auto mode with no ND filter, so the shutter speed is probably a thousand, something like that, 800 to a thousand. Now, if you go to the next shot, this is with the ND filter. This is using the ND16. Uh, and by the way, uh, for this test, the uh, ND filters for the Phantom 3 that I'm using are the Polar Pro ND filters. Uh, and this is the new set that they came out with about, mm, I think about a month ago. Uh, the first set they had issues with, and they, they absolutely, um, th they didn't just fix the problem, they actually redesigned them. So um, this is the updated set of ND filters that seem to work much better uh, than the first set. Uh, so... You'll notice that with this ND filter on, as I'm flying by, I'm hitting play and pause. Now look at these leaves. 
this is what you want. And the reason is you get a much, much, much more natural, uh, organic feel to it. Um, when I play the uh, example video and render it right after this, you'll see what I mean. You'll see the movement is much more fluid, uh, whereas backing up here, the movement on this shot, where frame by frame, you know, everything is perfectly in focus, even here and here. You can see all this stuff is, is just crisp and clean, like almost like a photograph. You almost get this, uh, this strobe effect to the emotion. It's almost like a flashing strobe effect as it goes by compared to the natural movement. Now let's put them side by side comparison. The same shot, I tried to fly the exact same pattern. It's a little bit off, but you get the point. And we pause it right there. Without the ND filter, look at this. Crisp and clean. And it gives you that real chop, chop, uh, choppy, stuttery motion. And then with the ND, look at that. This beautiful blending of the pixels that your eye, most, most consumers' eyes, if they don't even know uh, anything about videography and how it's done and shot and that kind of thing, which isn't, isn't really important, it's more pleasing to the eye to see motion uh, done in this way with that, um, that golden rule of the shutter speed being um, double your frame rate. The next test is about, it's the same thing. You're, I'm coming down toward the house here, and you've got this tree that goes by, crisp and clean, even though I'm moving by it pretty fast. Same shot with the ND filter. And you'll notice, you see that? Look at that branch. And then in the comparison, you can really see the difference. So I'm going to let the video run really quick. This segment, as I said, since it seems to stutter um, and lag a little bit uh, with the with this screen recording, but uh, I'll let you check it out and I'll be right back. So I hope this helps everybody out and, and gives a better understanding of why an ND filter is not just important, but it's a necessity for any kind of aerial videography that, that, uh, that you're wanting to have a more natural, organic, and cinematic feel to it. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Please subscribe and please comment below if, uh, if there's anything else you want to learn or wondering about uh, or have suggestions on maybe the next tutorial or video I do. Thanks again. Have a great day.